Excellent. Guys, that is um that was worth staying on for right there. That'll make you more money this week. I don't make more money today. So, all right. It, it, now, Brady, it makes fun. the whole thing less, uh, less awkward. Yeah. Right? Like we're trying to make it as simple and easy as possible for these people. Hello, everybody. Grady Polson here, Family First Life America. Uh, beyond excited to have Logan O'Brien on with us, visiting virtually from uh, Seattle, Washington. He protected 90 families last month with life insurance, top producer in our entire company. Logan, how many families were you protecting four months ago? Four months ago, between like 20 and 30. 20 and 30, four months ago. And this past month, 90. So he has taken a, a hockey stick growth path on his own personal production. He's going to dig in today on the things he does, he says, uh, specific word tracks he uses, how he books his appointments, et cetera. So without further ado, uh, you're about to jump into some tips that you give, that you have. Yeah. So these are just some uh, sales tips. Like uh, I was saying uh, before, you know, this is different than any other sales position I've had. You know, car sales is very happy-go-lucky, very friendly. Um, a lot of pressure, right? Um, and I feel like just being here has taught me a whole new way of of sales and how I think it's going to be um, changing like going forward. Um, so the first one's going to be like uh, to sound like an underwriter, sound like the application guy, right? So so what does that mean? Like how I'm talking right now, I probably wouldn't talk like this over the phone, right? So Grady, if I'm if I'm calling you for an appointment, I'm calling you like this. Hey, Grady, uh, this is Logan just calling for our appointment today. How are things in your neck of the woods? Perfect. Okay. So neutral, detached, um, uninterested, like I'm on it, like I'm on an hourly wage, right? I'm working all the overtime I can lately. Yep. Right before Christmas. Great. Um, so is to sound like that. Like, I don't want to sound like if they sound excited, I'm not going to match their, their tonality. I'm going to be cool, calm, collected. And by the end of the call, if I do everything right, they'll be cool, cool calm, and collected too, right? Because that's how I want them to feel. When we're going through the application, I'm asking for their social, their banking information. I want them to be relaxed and I want them to be, um, you know, not, not all over the place, right? So step uh, tip one would be sound like an underwriter, right? So you can even, you know, you throw things into that. You can wear glasses if it helps you, um, right? Just kind of like you're just the nerdy underwriter, right? Got it. Um, and that reduces a lot of sales pressure for me. Um, number two would be texting and calling for same day and next day appointments, right? Um, I used to book my appointments more than two days out. People forget. We have very short-term memory. A lot of people do. Um, so it, it just works, you know, if you're doing uh, telesales, at least to, uh, get up in the morning, you know, seven, eight o'clock, start texting, start calling same day appointment, uh, preferably if not, you know, next day as well. And that way, instead of, uh, only being able to run five days out of the week, you're now able to run seven days out of the week. Right. So that would, that'd be number two. Um, and number three would be using body language to your advantage over the phone and tonality, right? So the second you call an appointment or you're, you're dialing to set an appointment, they're going to make a snap judgment of you in four seconds, right? Based on how you sound and what your body language is doing, even though they can't see you, right? So if I'm calling you, Grady, it's, uh, hey, Grady. Hello. This is Logan. I'm just the manager over here at the final expense office. Um, someone just dropped that request down that you mailed back to us uh, with the mortgage amount here as uh, $100,000. Do we got that right? Yeah, that seems right. Okay, perfect. So the first step of that was, hey, my name's Logan. I'm over here. At, uh, you grab a pen and paper. We'll get this out of the way for you. So using all those body language things, guys, especially in the beginning, is going to help you learn what tonality you use, you know, so that's going to be super important because even though they can't see you, 
they're making a mental image of what you what you look like based on how you talk, right? Um, and then the last one, uh, tip number four, which has really helped me in the last two months close more deals and convert better, is to reduce sales pressure, right? So what do I mean like that? So Grady, for example, if we're on a call and you go, uh, Logan, I'm really not sure that I need this. I go, hey, Grady, I'm not sure either. My job's just to see if this is something that, you know, even makes sense for you and your family, um, which we're going to find out here in a second. If it doesn't, then it doesn't. Uh, most important thing is that this needs to be budget friendly or else, you know, it just doesn't make sense to do anyway, right? So what do most salespeople do there? They would say, oh yeah, I can get anyone approved. Um, let's find something that fits your budget. You know, this is going to be great. Just give me a couple seconds here. Um, so another thing, guys, is I don't use certain phrases that salespeople use. I don't say, hey, Grady, just checking back in. I don't say, hey, Grady, just following up. I don't say fantastic. Uh, I don't say sir. I don't say Mr. Uh, Polson. I don't say stuff that salespeople say, right? So I'm just an underwriter. That's all. I'm just the application guy. My job's pretty boring. So I'm going to talk like the application guy. Got so it. yeah, those are the those are the four I have for everyone. That's awesome. I was uh, drop a drop an LO in the comments below to show Logan O'Brien some love on that. I I've been what I've been trying to do is explaining the, what your point one, which I loved, is mm -hmm. act like an underwriter. Is it like almost like you know I'll do some role playing with new agents and they're just so excited rolling through they're trying to get through the script as fast as possible, and I'm like you got to think like you're a police officer sometimes. Police officer, principal, doctor, authoritarian figures of society don't talk quick. They talk with direction and tone and specificity, right? A police officer doesn't come up to the window and goes, you know, what are you doing? Why are you driving so fast? What's going on? Everything okay? What's going on? No, they go, uh, sir, could you explain to me uh, where you're driving so fast? Calm, control, completely pausing, slow tonality. So the pausing draws out attention. And that's how professionals talk. And if you think about that and you start to go, okay, I, I'm not booking any appointments. I need to slow down the way I'm talking. All these top guys say is talk with control. So dude, you nailed it on the head there. Um, and maybe we'll get into this, but for number two, the texting in the morning, texting to book same days, will you go through your, your, your tell us what you text out to try to book appointments? And yeah. Logan said he does this with all aged leads that you can buy in the CRM for $4. Aged instance. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, so this is the uh, final expense one. So, hey, Grady, this is Logan O'Brien. I'm the field underwriter signed to get you the info regarding the final expense plans and its benefits. Uh, we're doing everything virtually now, so it only takes about 15 minutes to go over. What time are you available to give me a call today or tomorrow? That's number one. That one's going to get the most responses. Okay. Right. Um, and this is shout out to Kirby. This is directly from him. Love Kirby. Um, yep. Um, and then, you know, there's some follow -on up ones in there, but I mean, it's pretty much, it's pretty much the first one, right? Okay. So number one, you're, you're, you're getting them at all angles, right? So you're calling them, you're texting them and you're leaving a voicemail. If you leave a voicemail, I personally leave a voicemail. What do you say? Right. So, Hey, Grady, this is Logan. I'm the manager over here at the final expense office. Um, unfortunately, this is one of the last calls uh, they'll have me make. Remember, they, right, Sorry. it's not me. They'll have me make before they send someone out to the property. Uh, just trying to mitigate that so we can just take care of this over the phone. Just give me a call back and you can. Thanks, bye. Right, so you're on their side. You're doing them a favor, right? And they don't want someone coming out to their house randomly. So they're going to call you back. They're either going to be upset or they're going to book an appointment. But you're going to get it resolved, and that's all that matters. You that's know? all that matters. Yep. Good, bro. Okay, so we got text, we got a voicemail. Let's. So do you? So when you? So go. Ahead, what else you got? You want to do appointment? I wanted. I want it all, bro. I want it all. Okay. Let's do mortgage protection appointment. Okay. 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 So I'm calling you. I'm calling you. Hey, Grady. Hello. Hey, Grady. This is Logan. Um, I'm sure you're busy. I'm the manager over here at the mortgage protection office. Um, one of the office girls here just sent down that postcard that you mailed back to us uh, with the mortgage amount is $200,000. Do we got that right? That seems right. Yeah. 
Okay, perfect. And are you working or retired? Uh, I'm retired. You're retired. Okay, gotcha. So most people fill these out just because they want to make sure when they pass away, the house gets paid off, or if they become sick or disabled, the payments get made. Is that what you're looking for or something different? I'm worried about getting sick. Yeah. I thought it said something like it'll pay the mortgage payments. Yeah. If you qualify. Um, but once that hits my desk, it typically means one of two things. Um, either one, nobody got the info out to you or two, they just didn't show you all the options you can qualify for in the state. Right. Um, so my job is just to go over the info with you. It's just a quick 15 minute call. I can't do it right now. I just need to see what time, you know, usually back from your daily activities. I had someone come out a few months ago. It just wasn't affordable. Yep, I see that here. Um, so I, I'm I'm contracted with all the, the companies in the state. Um, so my job is number one to make sure you know we find you something super budget friendly, um, and then number two something that you know has good living benefits if you do qualify for. Um, so I don't have anything left today, but I might be able to squeeze it in tomorrow. Around what time would you be home? Uh, I don't think I actually filled this thing out. You don't think so? Okay. Did you get the text I sent you with uh, your hand? Is that your handwriting? You pull oh, it that up? is. Yeah. Oh man, that's actually my wife's handwriting. She must have filled it out. Yeah. I figured. Yeah, it looks it looks really nice. I figured you didn't fill that out. So. Okay. Awesome. So, uh, are you guys usually home around the same time? Do you have like different schedules? Is she retired as well, or? Yeah, she's also retired. Okay. She retires gotcha. first. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Um, so it looks like I either have a uh, four o'clock later today, or I could use six. Uh, it only takes 15 minutes over the phone. Which time works better for you? Uh, I think we're going to be busy, man. I think I don't think we can do either. Be busy. Okay, perfect. So it yeah, might be hard to just dinner. Get... Yeah, no, I'm with you. Um, so it might just be hard to randomly get a hold of me. Um, so let me pull up my calendar here. And once you pull up yours. And we can just kind of find a time where we can just go over the info with you. Does that sound fair enough? Okay. How's tomorrow? Tomorrow? Uh, let me check. Okay. Looks like I got some availability uh, afternoon or evening. Uh, what would you prefer? Let's do 3.30. 3.30. Looks like I don't have a three, but I do have a four. Does that work for you? That works. Okay. Perfect. I'll talk to you. Bro, spot on. Drop an LO in the comments again. You're never too eager. You're never too eager. You're never pushing. You're not jumping at it. You're not, you're, you are completely in control. Yeah. There's the, the, the tonality. If you've picked anything up guys, it's his clean tonality about how he's not, I don't I'm not going to go. I was going to say I'm about prom night, but like, it's like, he's not on, he's not in the position where he's like, Oh, he's foaming at the mouth to try to close him. Oh, well, let's do it right now. No, it's they let's do it tomorrow. Let's do it tomorrow. Okay, perfect. Like when you have enough leads and you have enough appointments and you have done this enough, you know that the people you're talking to, like there'll be one out of a hundred that are jerks, right? There's just, there's some people out there that are just jerks, but 99% of the 99 out of a hundred of the people are good people who filled this out because they love someone and don't want to leave them a financial burden. So when you take control like Logan does, you're only you're helping giving them confidence that this is something that they want to follow through with. So excellent. Yeah. What, what, what else you got in there? Because well, that was. Yeah. And you made a great point, too. Like, um, like we're doing them a favor. Right. They filled something out. They want coverage. They're not doing us a favor. Right. So you got to act like you're the one doing them a favor. You know, and, and if you don't have enough appointments, well, act like you do. Right. Sure. Act like you're you are busier than them. If you're calling final expense, you got to be a little tougher. Those people are the busiest people I've ever met in my life. Right. 80 year old Mary. She's got 10 appointments, a doctor's appointment, hair appointment, everything. Right. So you really got to learn how to not not, um, you know, kind of play hard to get in a way yeah. where it's like, hey, I'm busier than you. And you don't have to say it, but you have to it has to come across that way. Like I probably did have a three thirty for you, Grady, but I want you to know I'm busy, so I'm putting you at four. Exactly. Right. right. Um, and then, um, yeah. On top of that, I mean, I don't know. The first really paragraph there is going to be the most important part. We do it again, just right? so we can we can get for the people that are taking notes and watching this on replay. Of course, yeah. So 
the first paragraph there is super important. So I'm not too excited. I'm not going, hey, Grady, this is Logan O'Brien at XYZ Company. How are you today? Right? Clay. I'm just going, hey, Grady. Hello? Hey, Grady. I was like captivated. Sorry. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> hey, this is Logan. Um, I'm sure you're busy. I'm just the manager over here at the Mortgage Protection Office. One of the office girls here. So what am I doing there? I'm leaning in, tilting my head. I'm squinting my eyes like it's a mystery. I want to I want to get them into the engaged, right? One of the office girls over here just set down that postcard that email back to us uh, with the mortgage and I is $200,000. Do we got that right? Okay. Yeah, that sounds right. Guys, if you get that first part right in any script, it doesn't matter what script, right? If you get that first part right, you're probably going to book the appointment. Because the first four seconds is everything, right? So it's the same. It's the same thing on an appointment, right? So we could we could run through that if you want to do that. Let's Grady. do it real quick. So in that, so do this. So we're gonna go. The girls just said two hundred thousand. They got that right. And I go, dude, I'm not interested in not. In, I'm I'm not interested, right? So how do you? Because we got a good request. I mean, that happens, right? I'm not interested. I don't care how how well you're positioning and you. So I'll go, I'm not interested. Now, how do you rebut how do you rebut that? Gotcha. No, I, I completely get it. Um, did you get that picture I sent you in the postcard by chance through text? Yeah, I see that now, but I someone came okay. out and I'm I'm just I don't think we're interested, man. Yeah, perfect. So most people fill these out originally just because they want to make sure when they pass away the house gets paid off. Um, or if they become sick or disabled, the payments get made. Is that what you were originally looking for or something different? I have insurance through work. Gotcha. Yeah, most people have a work policy. Um, I have one myself. Um, but the only problem with the work policy is it's kind of like a work car, meaning when you leave, it goes away. Um, so most people just get something private put in place just to make sure, you know, everything is taken care of no matter what. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Okay, perfect. But once that hits my desk, Grady, so it's just keeping going with the script, yeah. right? I don't care what objection they give me. You overcome it, move on. Correct. Yeah. So yeah, and, and to answer your question, it's Mercedes. I'm not interested means they just haven't heard the value of it. So mm -hmm. they're not interested is gonna go, they have it like why aren't they interested? They stopped loving their family. Now you can't say that you don't love your you don't love your kids anymore, but you've got to push through what they're saying because there is a reason they filled it out. Now maybe they got the coverage, okay? And so they're good now. And we just, they, they don't want to say I already got it because then they know something else is coming. Maybe they saying, I'm not interested because they got had two people come out and they applied twice and got declined twice. So they just don't want to deal with it anymore. So it's kind of, you're trying to figure out what is it that you're not interested anymore, but you can't say, what is your interested? I'm just not interested, bro. So you have to go around and go through the script like Logan's going, because it doesn't matter what you're not interested anymore, Mary. I need to get this packet out to you, or we need to go through these options quickly because it's it's my responsibility. This is falling mm -hmm. on my desk, and and the girls they just brought your file over here, and now I've got to take a look at it. Yeah, so it's mm -hmm. it's pushing through it. Okay. Yep, and most of the time it's just a knee jerk reaction. Yep. Yeah, you know, like when I sold cars uh, at a dealership, people would come on the lot, um, and instead of hey yeah, let me show you around this and that, well, you don't need to buy today, do you? That's an example of reducing sales pressure. You don't need to buy today, do you, Grady? Okay, yeah. good. We're super busy, but I can show you around real quick. So it's the same thing here. It's it's playing hard to get. It's actually, you know, pretending to be busy until you're actually busy, right? Um, and then the other thing with that, too, is you're not interested. Well, of course, you're not interested. You don't have enough information to be interested. Um, so my job is just to run through that with you, see if it even makes sense for you. Um, what time are you usually back home from work? Right. So you mix something in, you agree, overcome, ask a question. Do you always book appointments or do you ever try to go right then and there? And so if someone texts me back now, then yeah, you can call, call them on the spot, take care of it, see if, you know, see if they're serious or not. Yeah. But your process is like, so you've set your business up where you're not even dialing, you're only talking to actually interested people. Yeah. You I mean, I'm dialing like landlines that can't be texted, but yeah, got it. pretty much. But you just text, you're sending out how many texts in the morning? So you wake up six, I would get, get set, get your LaCroix. I'm going to get sponsored one day. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're, uh, then you're now, you're sending out texts. Ballpark amount of texts a day you send. Uh, 40 to 180. 
40 to 180. I love it. And yeah. then not start- all of them are new. Some of them are just, you know, put in the cycle and we just keep, keep grinding them until they work. The reason I do it manually is because people like the blue check uh, box, right? So Rich Stebecki says too, he's a blue check mark m- m- mafia as well. And I respect it. I just, I would just go faster with like a Google voice account, but I, yeah. I'm, I'm all iPhone. If anyone's ever watched any training of me, I, I shun the Android. Sorry. You gotta, you gotta, <laughs> gotta, gotta step it up. Yeah. Um, okay. So you like, but people like the blue text because they also would then also know that that's your cell phone. So yep. it actually elevates the professionalism. Yep. Um, and they know it's it's me calling because my caller ID shows up. If you guys haven't set that up, freecallerregistry.com. It's 100% free. They'll get it uh, registered with all the phone carriers. Hey, one more time. Freecallerregistry.com. Freecaller registry. Will you type that in, Caitlin? Freecallerregistry.com. That's awesome. So you get yourself registered. That way your name shows up. What do you, what do you have? Your Is it just Logan O'Brien or do you have... Yeah. Just my name. insurance guy on as your I should just put application guy. Application guy. Yeah. The manager. Yeah. <laughs> Honey, the manager is calling me again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Logan, tremendous. Any final tips to the everyone out there who's new, uh, getting reborn or rocking that you could pass down to, to, to close us out today? Yeah. So you guys get got to get around people that have the results that you want, right? But a lot of people I've noticed go about this the wrong way. A lot of people make an ask without providing value first. So figure out if if you want to get around someone that's that's doing the things you want to learn, figure out how you can provide value to them and then you'll receive value back. It's like on my presentation, I send them do your own will.com, not just because I want to know who they bank with, but because I want to provide value to them first before they give me all their information for the application, right? So when you provide value, someone's going to feel like they should provide value back, right? Um, so that's super important because I see people reaching out to people all the time, but you know they, they don't make a, a a value offer back. You know what I mean? It's got to be a two way street. Can you dig into that? How do you? What are you? What are you doing there to do, to do that? So, so, I mean, for example, like, like Grady, if you were doing it a way different than me, I would figure out like how we could come together, figure out like what works in our scripts, what doesn't. Uh, and like, your will part. What do you, what do you, oh, what yeah, you, yeah. Yeah. What are you using it to get bank information? Teach us that. Yeah. So I'm going through the financial inventory. I don't ask the identity theft question. I just ask, so Grady, you have a will? I, I don't. Okay. Perfect. No worries. So I'll go ahead and text you over a website right now. It's called doyourownwill.com. Um, it's hundred percent free. Um, you should go on there and type it up, print it out. And then do, who do you bank with? Chase. Chase. Yeah. So they have a free notary service. So once you print it out, you just run it down the chase. They'll notarize it for free. Um, just so you can get both these things taken care of at once and you don't have to pay any crazy attorney fees. Okay. Now you have their bank, you have their state, and now you can pull their routing number. Yep. And then when you say we have your routing number as? One, two, three, four. Okay, perfect. And the account number is? Boom. Do that for people who've never heard that before. Because the first time I heard someone do that, I, my jaw hit the floor. So t- teach people how you do that. Like c- cover that like 30 second part of the of your presentation. Because I know you kind of just did it, but I want, I, I took gotcha. it. So what's your, Grady, what's your height? Uh, 5'11". Perfect. And your weight before breakfast? 220. 220. Okay, gotcha. It says that on your ID? Yeah. Is it less on your ID? No, it says 220. I haven't okay. got a new one, so I perfect. need to stay there. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Um, perfect. And then uh, do, you, do you have a will? I don't. Okay, gotcha. So um, I know a lot of people don't, but I, I'm actually partnered with a company called doyourownwill.com. Um, I'll go ahead and text that over to you so you when you get it. And what's nice about them, it's 100% free. Just go in there, type it up, print it out, and they get run it down. To, who do you bank with? Chase. So it's like a cutoff sentence, depending on who, who do you bank with? Chase. Perfect. So they have a free notary service. Just take it down there, get notarized, um, just so you don't have to pay, pay any crazy attorney fees. Boom, you're doing them a favor before you go into the application, right? Huge. Um, and then the second part of that is when you're in the application, guys, go on Google, Chase Bank, Arizona, routing number. And Grady, uh, you said you were going to be using Chase Bank to pay for this if you're approved, right? Yeah. Okay, you you open that in Arizona? Yep. 
Okay, so in Edna's system here, they're showing me the routing is one, two, three, four. Um, just need you to verify that matches your records with like a blank check or account summary if you can go and grab that. Thanks. Okay, then they come back and then and then you got it. Check me, girl. Excellent. Guys, that is um that was worth staying on for right there. That'll make you more money this week. I don't make more money today. So, all right. It, now, it, great. it makes fun. the whole thing less, uh, less awkward. Yeah. Right? Like we're trying to make it as simple and easy as possible for these people. Yeah. So. Logan, any, this is the final tip. You can't go into some training lesson again. What's yeah. the final, <laughs> final, final advice you've got to everyone oh, who man. wants to duplicate what you're doing, what you're doing, bro. Yeah, guys, I would, I would say just to end with, um, this 80% of this is, is going to be a mental game. This is either going to be the lowest paying career you've ever had or the highest paying career, depending on where your focus is at and if, if you're cutting out distractions or not, right? Just give yourself a year, right? God willing, I have six years clean and sober today. And when I got clean and sober, they said, give yourself a year, right? And if you want, we'll refund your misery if you don't want to be sober after a year. And I didn't want to my my misery refunded. So I treated this business the exact same way. You got to get get on page with the spouse. Tell her, look, I'm going to take this serious for one year. I'm cutting out the weekends. I'm cutting out the booze. I'm cutting out partying, cutting off friends that might not be on the same trajectory as me, even though I still love them. But um, give yourself a full year. Cut out the distractions. Put your head down. Get around the right people. Work the weekends. Love it, bro. Thank you for everything. Drop a 400 in the chat below to show Logan some love and gratitude for all he shared with us today. He has spent thousands, tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars on leads to get his skill set to the level where he can now pour it out for us and help us now advance our careers. So you want to appreciate you, brother. Looking forward to cheering you on, putting a red jacket on your shoulders in Miami. And, uh, and, and the future is bright, man. So thank you for your time today. And thank you guys all for joining us and, and focusing on getting yourself better because that's all that matters. Skill growth, everything else. Discipline yourself, give it a year and you'll never look back, man. Appreciate you, bro. Talk soon. Thanks,